I know we've said it a million times that fans are doing the best work, and nowhere is that more evident than in the vintage Star Wars toy collecting space. And I'm so glad to see that Stan Solo and Trash Compactor have new rounds of toys and accessories for us to look at. So let's get started. Do you really think we're gonna find a pilot here that'll take us to Alderaan? Uh, most of the best freighter pilots that we found here only watch a step. First, we gotta talk about Trash Compactor's expanded range of accessories. Now, Trash Compactor is an amazing store. You remember this guy. He was the guy that finally put the blaster in Luke Skywalker's hand. Now, if you go to his Etsy store, link in the video description, you will see a massively expanded range of products, figures, and accessories that he is custom 3D printing. The variety is now out of this world. I can't even follow it. But for me, the real gems are his accessory upgrades and additions for vintage Kenner. And the first one I want to talk about happens to be for the first Star Wars figure I ever had, which is Chewbacca. If you recall, or if you grew up in that time period, or if you collect vintage Star Wars now, you'll know that Chewbacca has a very weird rifle. It is actually his bowcaster without the bow arms on it. What Trash Compactor has done is take that Kenner design and add the bow arms to it. So now it looks accurate to the movie while still having that Kenner spirit. I've often pondered why the bowcaster looked so weird in the Kenner line, and I've come to the conclusion that the reason is because you barely saw it in the original Star Wars film. The footage that would have shown it clearly was deleted, and those are the moments where Han and Chewie are confronting Jabba in Mos Eisley. And as we all know, Kenner would pretty much lock in their designs at that point, so Chewbacca had that same strange rifle all the way through the Kenner line into 1985. Another fun addition that Trash Compactor has devised is Leia's hood. You can finally put her hood up with this little cap. And this is a great little addition to any Kenner display, especially if your Princess Leia no longer has her vinyl cape, because putting the hood on her really makes her look complete. As we all remember, she only had this hood up for a few seconds in the beginning of Star Wars, but nonetheless, it's nice to have it as an option. The next upgrade is one I'm very humbled by, because it was when Trash Compactor watched my last video about fan Star Wars toys, he saw that I made mention of the fact that my Han Solo with his Stormtrooper belt that was made by Trash Compactor was holding his actual blaster and not a Stormtrooper blaster because I didn't want the handle of the Stormtrooper blaster to stretch out Han's hand. Because the original Han Solo in the vintage line has a hand that can easily get warped if you don't maintain it properly. And I never wanted him to be unable to hold his original blaster. So Trash Compactor went off and redesigned the grip of the vintage Stormtrooper blaster so that it had a recess for Han's thumb and therefore wouldn't overstretch the hand. So now I can display my childhood Han Solo guilt-free and worry-free with his Trash Compactor Stormtrooper belt and now his Han Solo-specific Trash Compactor Stormtrooper Vintage Blaster. The Trash Compactor wizardry when it comes to the Death Star doesn't end there. He's also made mouse droids you can buy to add to your Palatoy or Kenner Death Star playsets. That's where Trash Compactor, I think, really does an amazing job of mining the original trilogy to see what the vintage Kenner line could have brought to it and didn't. So, for example, if you recall, Kenner had this survival kit of accessories that had gas masks and everything like that. But beyond that, it didn't have many of the other things that we saw the characters using in the film. So, in the case of Chewbacca, he's provided the goggles and maintenance welder that Chewbacca is wearing when Han Solo comes back into Echo Base. So, if you really want to add variety to your Kenner display, you can now add Chewbacca with his tools on top of the vintage Millennium Falcon, getting the ship ready to go pay off Jabba the Hutt. I'll come right back and give you a hand. <laughs> Lastly, where Trash Compactor accessories are concerned, I've got to talk about his new Luke Skywalker stuff. Trash Compactor has designed the macro binoculars that Luke famously uses on Tatooine, as well as his goggles and sun hat from the deleted scenes in the very beginning of the film. When I did the thumbnail for this video and posted it as a preview on social media, I discovered that a lot of people don't remember Luke ever wearing that hat, and it's clear they don't have knowledge of the infamous deleted scenes from the very beginning of the movie that would have introduced us to Biggs as well. Luke is there maintaining a moisture evaporator out in the desert with the hat and goggles on with his land speeder parked a little ways away, and he sees the Star Destroyer blockade runner battle in the sky with his macro binoculars. So it's really cool that Trash Compactor has given us these accessories for the vintage Luke Skywalker. And speaking of Tatooine and Mos Eisley and the desert, one of the big new figure releases from Stan Solo is the Snoot Spy, now known as Garandan. He did not have a name when I was a child, so we just kind of knew him as 
the long snout spy or snoot spy or long snoot or whatever he was called but he had no figure in the Kenner line. And so Stan Solo has worked his magic and provided that figurine for us. And it is really cool to see the eye that Stan Solo has for vintage Kenner. He understands how vintage Kenner slash Palatoy looked at these toys and how they designed them to fit into the entire range. This figure looks and feels like it would have been released in 1979 along with all of the other Tatooine themed characters. He comes with a perfectly recreated black vinyl Kenner cape, and they even adapted the Cloud City pilot communicator in black to be his communicator to talk to the stormtroopers and alert them to the Millennium Falcon trying to get away. And when you see the whole figure, you just go, yeah, that's exactly what Kenner would have done if they'd gotten around to this design. It's amazing to me because it seems like Stan Solo knows exactly where to put the detail and exactly where to hold back. He walks that balance beam perfectly, where you just look at it and go, yep, that's gonna fit seamlessly into my Kenner display. And as always, he's provided this figure carded for MOC collectors, and it looks spectacular. I don't know how else to say it. It really looks amazing. And he's even done this with the Slave Leia and Ula figures. The Slave Leia comes smartly in a Return of the Jedi card back and a Power of the Force variant. So if you're somebody like me who visualizes the Slave Leia being a figure that would have come out in 1985, you have that option. Ula herself comes on a beautiful Return of the Jedi card back. Stan Solo is knocking it out of the park every time. There's just no other way to say it. And finally, we get to talk about Stan Solo's first vehicle. Now he did the Bantha, which is a vehicle, but it's technically categorized as a creature. But this is the first vehicle he's done, which is the Ubrickian Land Speeder. It's got some numbers on it, which I can never remember. I think it's 9,000, and then there's another number, which is Z001, or Z001, or Z001, depending on how many British people are watching. But it is the Ubrickian 9000 Land Speeder, which was parked outside the cantina when Obi-Wan and Luke arrived. This little vehicle being made is a milestone in two respects for the original Star Wars film, because Kenner never actually made mini rig vehicles for the original Star Wars line. The mini rigs would become popular during Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and continue into the final year with Power of the Force. Budget sized fictional vehicles that they they always joked were just outside the camera's range. The closest they came to this in the original film's toy line was the Imperial Troop Transporter, but it was by far no mini rig. Yes, it was a fictionalized vehicle, but it was a big vehicle that commanded a good price, especially with all the sound features. Stan Solo has manufactured the very first mini rig based on the original Star Wars film. And in this case, unlike the Empire and Jedi mini rigs, this mini rig actually existed in the film. You can tell that just as much thought went into this vehicle as all of Stan Solo's figures, because it has an opening hatch that's the realistic opening hatch at the top, and then the entire middle section hinges open as well to provide easier access for the two figures that go inside. The cockpit is fully detailed, but fully Kenner detailed. It's not overly detailed like a Power of the Force 2 or a later Hasbro vehicle would be. It is actually Kenner designed with the simple ribbed seats, the one little control stick and stickers for the console and dashboard lights and buttons. And I have to give Stan Solo props for putting the paint applications on there where Kenner would have used stickers because Stan Solo knows that he is catering to the collector market. And so even though the insignia on the Ubrickian land speeder, that little red symbol that goes around the top would probably have been stickers on the Kenner version, he's decided, no, I'm gonna permanently paint app those on there so that collectors don't have to worry about it. And it's a really nice, subtle upgrade that takes nothing away from the Kennerness of this design. The vehicle integrates seamlessly into a Kenner Star Wars display, and if you're fortunate enough to have either the original or a reproduction of the cardboard cantina backdrop playset, that's where you're going to want to display it, right there on the right side. It just looks perfect sitting there in a diorama. I've said it before and I'll say it a million times more, it's always so much fun for me to put new quality items into my Star Wars Kenner display and not just have my mind locked into 96 figures and a handful of vehicles or whatever it was. When they're done right and they're done to a high quality, like Trash Compactor and like Stan Solo do, it's really gratifying. That's good. You've taken your first step into a larger world. 
if my heart was to grow three sizes larger today, it would be because of the work that Stan Solo and Trash Compactor are doing. They have really gone above and beyond to pull the full potential out of the Star Wars Kenner line. And the amazing part about it is they're continuing to do it. Like this isn't the swan song for Stan Solo or Trash Compactor. These, these two guys, they're just getting started and they're, they're moving at a good clip. And I cannot wait to see what they do next. I cannot wait to see what both of these guys come up with next. Uh, so if you are a vintage Star Wars collector and you're open to new additions that are based on the original trilogy, you would be remiss to not look these guys up. And the links to their uh, Etsy stores are in the description below. So thanks for watching this, everyone, and I'll see you on the next video.